Hey Yaki Gang, Yak 30 Guy here, and in our last lesson, I showed you guys how to break down a whole chicken. Now, if you have not watched that video, I definitely recommend to go back and check that video out as it's gonna show you some really important insights into all the various muscle groups of a chicken to make good yakitori. Now, to make yakitori, you can buy the individual parts. You can buy the breasts, you can buy the thighs, you can buy the wings. However, if you're watching this, it's because you wanna make really good yakitori. And to make good yakitori, you always wanna start with the whole chicken. You wanna get it fresh. You want it to be organic, air chilled, as fresh as possible. Check that date or ask the butcher. If you start with that fresh whole chicken, that chicken is just gonna, it's gonna taste better. It's gonna smell better. It's gonna feel better. And if you make yakitori from that, it's just gonna be very delicious and juicy. So to make good yakitori for yourself, or if you wanna wow your friends or family, because yakitori is just definitely a party food, Start with that whole chicken. If you need to catch up on that lesson, just go back to the last video and just use that whole chicken to make really good yakitori. Now, moving on forward though, we're gonna be focusing on all those individual parts that we broke down from a whole chicken. So today we're gonna be focusing on the thigh and the leg right here. So the thigh and leg and making various skewers from the thigh. Now, I'm starting out with the thigh one, because it's just the standard, iconic yakitori meat piece right there. Uh, it happens to be my favorite skewer made from thai, the negima, which is basically, negima means in between onions. So you got the chicken meat, the onion, chicken, onion. One of my favorites now with the thai, it's just so iconic. You can be at a festival in Japan, so street food in Japan, the cheap yakitori at 7-Eleven or that mission star, top of the line yakitori, when you get that thai meat, when it's, whether it's seasoned in salt or dipped in tare, just that juicy thai meat, it's just such an iconic yakitori piece. So definitely wanted to start off these skewering lessons with the fan favorite, my favorite. We're going to start out with the thigh and legs. So to get skewering though, we just want to have our basic equipment necessary. We want our cutting board right here. We want our knives. Now I'm going to be using my Garaski chicken knife that I used in my chicken breakdown. I'm going to continue using this knife. However, if you're at home and just have a regular standard kitchen knife, that's totally fine. Just to make sure it's sharp. We got a little soup stock pot to put all the bones and maybe cartilages, whatnot. We'll put it in here. We can make soup from it later. Definitely need some skewers. Now, there's a bunch of different skewers, different lengths out there, but I recommend if you're watching this and want to stay consistent to the skewers, the shapes and sizes that I'm making, try to get these ones that are six inches in length. Now, these are the round ones, and these are more of a square. This is usually online. They're sold as paddle skewers. In Japan, these are called teppo skewers. Either of these can work fine. I tend to like to use these paddle skewers. It's just much easier for me to skewer into it. However, I can also use this. So whatever you guys have, we can probably make it work, but I think length is gonna be much more important just to keep all the shapes and sizes consistent. And lastly, since we're gonna be using the thigh to make negima, we have some vegetables here. These are negi, negi means onion. So naga negi means long onions. These are the green onions or scallions. Now, if you're out shopping for green onions, I definitely recommend, if you can, buy the thickest, green onions possible versus the thin ones if you skewer these and after they grill and cook for a while they're going to shrivel up a bit and if you start with a thin one you won't really have much meat or the uh, onion left because the meat is just going to be bigger than the onions so you want to start with one of the bigger onions that way it's the same size as the meat and onions it's going to give you a nice bite when you're biting into that negima also we're going to be using some red onions if you don't have any red onions just yellow or brown onions, fine. And optional, because this might be harder for most people to find, are gonna be shiso leaves. So these are gonna be, I'm gonna be wrapping some skewers with these as well. If you can't find them, I'll also tell you an alternate way to make it. So these are all the ingredients. And if you guys are ready, let's move on to skewering. So right here we have the individual parts. So these are total four chicken legs from two chickens that I cut earlier today. So these are the drumstick and the thighs, and these are the thighs and the drumsticks that I've deboned early, earlier. So we'll take these chicken thigh right here. Now, I wanted to sort of show you guys the easiest method, the quickest method that I do when breaking these down. 
I've seen different yakitori shops, different yakitori masters cut it a different way. One of the most common ways that I've seen at yakitori shops definitely is holding onto the legs and using the tip of the knife to cut right through in the middle into the bone and separating the meat off the bone. I have a variation on that and the only reason I do that, let me explain, is basically I'm going to start with cutting off the drumstick and the thigh separately. And the reason I do that is oftentimes I may only need the thigh and I'm just going to save the drumstick for something else. But I found that this method, it just by separating it out into drumstick and a thigh, I found it to be a lot easier, not just for myself, but for all those students that I've been showing during my chicken cutting classes. It's just easier to visualize when the drumstick is already separate from the thigh. And that could be a cultural thing because in America we have a lot of, a lot of barbecued grilled uh, drumsticks. So just seeing the drumstick separate from the thigh might be easier for people to understand. So if you remember the lesson of breaking down a whole chicken, all the cutting we're going to be doing is really focused on these white lines that of fat that are right in between. So this is, let's say, a muscle right here. And there's going to be a white line of fat separating from this muscle that separates it from this muscle that separates from this muscle. So it's really easy to identify all the strips of muscle in the thigh or any, any other parts of the, of the chicken. But this way I can visualize all the different parts and show you guys. Now... Another thing that's, you know, I, I mentioned in the previous chicken breakdown video where we took this leg off and the oyster was the last part. So you're going to really be able to identify the oyster as this sort of last round piece right here at the very end. And we're definitely going to be saving that. So if you guys are ready, let's get these cut up into drumsticks. So similar to when we were last uh, breaking down a chicken, we're always going to be looking where the joint is so in this case this is you know the thigh and, and the knee joint right here we know it's right here so to break apart between the thigh and the drumstick we're going to find where that bend is and use our knife and just cut right in the middle so if this was imagine if this is a v-shape you're just going to cut right into the middle of the v-shape right here see the same thing so if this is that bendy area right here and also if you can imagine there's that white the fat line right here so that's also your guideline too where this thigh muscle ends and this is a drumstick muscle it ends right here so there's going to be fat right here so if you just take your knife this cuts right through so we have our two drumsticks and then i'll put it here and we have our thighs now so that once again to explain the thighs Basically, there's the bone running in between and all this muscle surrounding it. We have the oysters right here. So when using, basically, when deboning the thigh, we're going to be using that tip of the knife and follow along the white line. So if I cut right here, this white line, you can see, just even just slowly cutting it, it just separated this muscle from this muscle off the bone. And now once that's separated, you can then use the tip of the knife and go down even further start separating all the muscle from the bone you can do that on the same size on the other side i mean so just carve it across and then once you get these two sides separated you can then lift up basically in the bone you can use the tip of the knife and right here just basically it goes right to the other side so you just use the tip of the knife, go in and just cut right off. Same thing right here. You can just slowly just carve off, basically trimming off the muscle off this meat. And on the bottom right here, it's going to be a little bit of cartilage. So just cut it off right here. So this is basically the thigh off the bone. Let's do that same thing on this side. Basically use the tip of the knife and just, if you, once you get used to it though, you can, you don't have to go slow, you can just aggressively go down into the end. You if you go down in the end, it's not gonna it's not gonna cut through the skin. So right here, if you go just a tip and then carve it across. So if you feel the bone, you're using that tip of the knife, just carve in across the bone, guiding it across the bone, and that's gonna get you that one. And then separate that muscle and the bone right here. So you're gonna carve it across the bone. And then you should now be able to lift and stick your knife through. 
and just trim off right here. There's a hard knee cartilage area, so just cut right through. And this way, now I got the bones off the thighs. So let's put these thighs out here. I'll lay them out. We have now four thighs. I wanted to show you guys certain things that can be identifiable. So definitely, you're gonna start noticing once you cut a lot of thighs, you're gonna start noticing certain patterns in the thigh meat and all the meat's not gonna be random uh, muscle loins anymore. You're gonna start noticing that right here, this is the oyster. It's gonna be at the top, sort of a nice, does look like a small you know, oyster. It's a nice round meat right here. As well as right here, this is, in Japan we're calling it the Toro, Toro meaning just, you know, like fatty tuna, but this this loin right here definitely just stands out. And these are, uh, Chef Kono was calling these the filet. In Japan, I've learned these as a Toro or inner thigh. Definitely this inner thigh and right here, this oysters, the most tenderest part of the, the chicken thigh. So we want to be able to identify those parts so we can separate those out. So right here, so we know that this is the inner thigh. So we're just gonna carve that right off. The inner thigh, carve that right off. Here, inner thigh. And now, some of the inner thighs, definitely bigger than others. But you're gonna be able to identify it always as a sort of long strip, almost similar in, in volume as oyster but texture is a little bit different. It's gonna be a much more, definitely looks muscular when you see these, these lines. Right here, let's go, go ahead and grab these oysters. Now the oysters, how I cut it, I just basically cut my knife into it, cutting through the skin, so I can leave the skin on the oysters. Kinda of cut it as a rectangular piece with the oyster that's round and then the, the rectangular skin on. It's the same thing with all of them. We're just gonna cut off the oysters with the skin on. And so normally since you could only get two oysters from one chicken, it's definitely one of those rare sought out pieces. So if you go to like a yakitori shop, they'll have an oyster skewer, but it runs out pretty quick. So, and, all right, and we got the oysters right here and the inner thighs. We'll leave these in the container. We're gonna make skewers of those later. Now we have the inner thigh pieces. We'll also leave this in here, back in here, so I can show you how to now debone the drumsticks. Now, as I mentioned, uh, in Japan, oftentimes, you know, the thigh is here and they're gonna be deboning it with all of it. And that's one of the reasons for that, by the way, is you can hold on to this drumstick. It gives you a really nice sort of grip and you can just do it in, in a singular motion. However, it's very tricky. So I find that just separating the thigh, this is just really easy for you to understand all the various, especially within the thigh meat, all the different muscle groups right there. So, but for the drumsticks, I wanted to show you guys that same sort of method of, of cutting, carving across the bone on the drumstick. So if you leave the drumstick flat on here, you can be able to feel the bone using that tip of the knife, just go straight into it. And just like how we did with the thigh, if there's a hard bone right here and this is soft muscle, now basically sort of glide across that bone. So if we glide across the bone like this, then that meat will separate. And now on the other side, right here, so there's this is the bone, we wanna get this meat off. Same thing, just use a tip of the knife and glide across. We're gonna come around this knee area. And then once we get there, similar to what we did with the thigh, just stick your knife in, and then most of it is off. You should be able to just sort of pull it right off. Now, right here, there's, call these, the, oh, all of this right here, by the way, see these white strips? These are the Achilles tendons of the chicken. So this is a drumstick area, Achilles tendon, makes it very chewy, but we can use that chewiness to our advantage for our skewers. So this is right here, drumstick that's deboned. So the same thing with this one right here. So feel where the bone is. 
So, you know, flatten it out that way, you know where all the meat is. Let's take the tip of the knife and carve across. See with that bone. So basically, if you want to go again, carve it across, separate it out, put your tip of the knife in, carve across the bone, and then that way it's already separated. And then use that tip of the knife and just stab it in. And then here, if you want to, if you want to use your knife and trim, you can do that, or you can just pull it right off. And this one is it's gonna snap right off. Okay. So right here, the drumsticks, deboned. So we have all these bones here. On some of these, there's these cartilage areas. I'm gonna save these. But other than that, once there's not much on here, throw it into this soup stock right here. There's some crunchy knee cartilage. I'm gonna keep that. Let's see, there's some knee cartilage right here. I'm gonna keep that. And then the cartilage right here, keep that. Yep, everything else, just throw it into soup stock right here. Okay, so next step, we're gonna start taking these chicken thighs and making negi maridis. Now, I wanted to show you guys just different ways to make negi ma. I wanna say maybe like the classic standard way versus sort of the way that I've been doing it recently, but let's start with the classic negima just to make it much easier on you guys. As usual, just always have towels on hand, just wipe your hands, especially with these chicken thighs and whatnot. It's gonna get always um, sort of greasy from, you know, just all the fats. So for the classic chicken negima, the thigh negima, we're gonna make it easier for ourselves by just removing the skin off Peeling that skin, we can use that for maybe a skin skewer later. But you have this thigh meat. Now, the classic, classic, classic negima, we want to just make, just have cubes of essentially chicken thigh. So let's just cut them about one inch by one inch squares. Let's make it very easy, very standard yakitori. So just cubes. Not real cubes, I guess they're more like flat rectangle, but if you can just imagine just about inch width. And if you have various sizes, that's fine. You just kind of sort them out. If you have something that's a little bit bigger in volume, like this one, you can just move that to the top. Okay. Now, negima is going to be, so chicken thigh and some green onion, chicken thigh, green onion. So. We're going to be using these uh, onions that I've already pre-cut. Now, I think one thing that I do want to explain now that we can see close in these cameras. So these are the nice sort of thickness that I want. Let's see if it focuses. So I want sort of nice thickness like this. I want to say about a, a centimeter or if it's a millimeter, maybe like uh, a good size would be eight to 10 millimeters. If you get a smaller negi, this is going to be maybe about mm, like six millimeters. It can work. You know, if this is all you can find at the store, that's fine. But when you have a meteor green onion, it's just going to cook better. So try to get these meteor ones. So, and I like to just already lay them out the way I envision it to be skewered. And that way, it's just much easier to skewer. Now, so this is, this is gonna be the first time that we're skewering. I wanted to essentially teach you guys the right way or good habit to build right away as you're skewering. And that is always, always, always skewer on your cutting board. Do not skewer midair. And what I mean by midair is don't take your skewer and in midair start poking and skewering it. You always wanna leave it on the cutting board. So I'm leaving it flat on the cutting board and skewering it through like this, skewering it through flat. And actually what is going on is I have my right hand, my left hand, and the cutting board acts as essentially my, my third hand. It's holding this in place. Now if I do this, I can always, always consistently know that the only possible movement of error is gonna be this X and Y axis, right? So this way, this way. 
If I do it in midair, we have x, y, and a z axis, and you're just gonna have, you know, with yaktori, you want all the yaktori to be the same size, same shape, ideally as much as possible, because if they're all over the size, uh, one, when you plate it, it's not gonna look as good, but then more importantly, when you're cooking it, if they're different sizes and different shapes, they're gonna cook unevenly. So when you're cutting the chicken, it's very important that the pieces stay the same. Also, when you're skewering it, you wanna make sure they stay the same. So standard negima, this is using the cutting board and just skewering it into the cutting board. But right here, this is just a very, very, very standard chicken, onion, chicken, onion, chicken. Negima right here, let's do another one. Keep it flat. Then push. Now once you get some in, you can always push it down a bit. Keep it flat. Gonna skewer it through. Skewer. Okay, skewer it through. And you always want the nice sort of center of balance. So the Yaktori grill that uh, I use, the Live Art Electric grill that I use mainly, and a lot of you guys have already bought and are using, you know, that's resting on a metal mesh sort of grate. So the center of gravity may not matter too much. However, traditional Binchotan Yaktori shops, basically they're grilling between two rods. And in that case, having it centered is very important or else this is going to flip around on that grill so making sure that nice center balance is very important as well as you know you think of the customer if they're going to grab that skewer and about to eat it if it's lopsided and floppy it just doesn't feel right so to show your craftsmanship you want to show that it's nice and centered another thing to note is leaving the skewers out i've definitely seen uh, a lot of people when they're beginning to make yaktori there's maybe like an inch or three inches of skewer coming out if you have that much uh, skewer coming out the end when you're biting it, right? Like if your customer is biting it, your friend and guest is biting it, it's going to choke them on the back of the throat. So definitely all you need is just a little bit just so that the meat won't fall off. Or if you're cooking it on traditional rod, yaktori uh, uh, grill, just enough so that it hangs on the rod. So right here, we have our standard negima right here. And then now I'm going to work on what I my version of my negima that i've been working on that i find that it's my with the skin on and i prefer that way it just ends up being nice and crispy so i'm going to cut these with the skin on like this about one inch width and one inch width these extra trimmings we're going to be using a little bit later so we can always keep these aside now now that i have essentially about one inch one inch take my Negi, and then skewer the center. So for this one, I poke through the skin and the meat, roll it, poke it through this way, move this, move it all down, go through the green onion again, poke through the skin and meat first, basically kind of poking the bottom, and then I roll it and then poke it through. And then I get something like this. So, you know, if this is sort of the standard negima, this is the same thing, but negima with the skin on. And that way we get crispy skin along with the negima or the meat, the skin and the thigh meat. Now, I want to make this look even prettier. So what I always do is I end up just trimming the sides like this. Now, basically just made it a little bit more square. So... Right here, this is negima with skin. Standard negima, negima with skin. I'm gonna keep this for something else. Let's go ahead and go ahead and do another round. So with the chicken thigh though, I guess I can show you right here. You know, we we're able to identify the oysters as well as the inner loin part, but there's always, and I actually just cut it off right here. There's always one part that's just a little bit fattier. There's this fatty, it's, I wanna say it's less muscle and more fatty. So I'm actually trimming that one off. So this is actually this part right here. And if you ever mm -hmm. hold on to the chicken thigh, I think you'll be able to notice there's one side that's just a little bit more muscular, much more firm. Whereas this side is a little bit 
sort of flimsier with mm -hmm. fat lining, but we can use that to our advantage because that's fattier, so it's gonna be juicier, so it's gonna work in another skewer. We just have to be creative and think where we wanna use it. So the part with the fat, I'm removing that. So right here, basically cut that off. I'll use that for another skewer in a bit. Then we're still left with these parts. So same thing. I'm just trying to find, you know, where can I get the most uh, sort of surface area of skin to meet wherever there isn't skin on and trim that off. And with yakitori, the trimmings never go to waste. All these trimmings, you can put them in the grinder, make tsukune, which is a meatball, or I have another skewer that's coming up next that we're gonna be doing. So for this one, no negi. It's gonna skewer straight up, just into the skin first, roll it, meat into the skin, roll it, and then meat. Now, when you do that, it's gonna poof up a bit, but we can all, and you can keep this. Some, you know, some shops may just like all that extra meat. As I said, I wanna make sure that they stay relatively the same size. If I'm making multiple the same skewers, I wanna make sure they stay the same size. So I like to trim. So with this one, let's see, just trying to find the part that I can get the most sort of surface area of skin to meet. So there's one right there. Roll it to see, and I have this one. Trimmings right here. Same thing with this. So what I'm making right now, this one is thigh with skin on, with, not, with no negi. So I call this one momokawa. So momo means thigh, kawa means skin. Just gonna squeeze this down a bit and trim this. So from the four pieces of thigh, we got these following skewers right here. Now, the leftover pieces that we had that were a little bit fatty, what I wanna make with this is a skewer. I'm gonna use these green, these green onions. This one's a little bit uh, much more thinner, but in this skewer's case, it actually is gonna work just fine. This one is kind of thin, but I'll still make it work. Now, I'm gonna use this round skewer. Poke it into the, the right here, the skin and the meat at the same time. And sometimes if the skewer is a little bit dull, it's not gonna work. So I grab another skewer. Okay, poke through on the other end, putting green onion, and then these are uh, knee cartilage pieces that I was able to remove earlier from the bone. So I'm gonna put that in, and then poke it through the other side. So now I have basically similar to negima because it's still chicken and onion in between, but now we have this piece where it's knee cartilage, which is very crunchy, onion, which is crunchy, we're gonna have crispy skin, but all this fat is just gonna cook nicely over this one bite yakitori. So this I like to call the knee cartilage lollipop. So make three of those. I'm gonna make three of those. So once again, poke through the skin, the meat, green onion, grab some knee cartilage meat, and then poke through the other end. Oh. And the skewer broke. And if that happens, we have to use another one. So sometimes I'm able to uh, basically fix these, uh, the meat after you skewer it. But other times, the yakitori meat is, or chicken meat is very, very gentle or, you know, very soft in a sense of you can only skirt once and to fix something it can be difficult so definitely try not to break things all right trimming right here so we have this lollipop and one more lollipop onion some knee cartilage 
two in here and poke it through both the meat and the skin. Okay. So far we have all these skewers. So actually these are all basically four chicken thighs deboned. So we have the negima, negima chicken thigh with skin and these lollipops. All right, so moving on, we have some additional parts. So from the thigh, we also had these oysters. There's different ways that I can use these oysters. One of the ways that I wanna show in a, in a future video is sort of one of my original skewers where I'm gonna take these oysters, combine it with other meats. However, just to, for the sake of uh, showing a very common yakitori piece that you'll find at a yakitori shop, if you ask for like an oyster skewer, it's usually going to be maybe three or four oysters on a skewer. And that's one of those ones that usually sells out right away. You got to get there the first hour. So we have four oysters right here. I'm just going to line them up and just skewer them through. So same thing that we did with the chicken thigh with the skin on. Just basically poke through one part, roll it over, and then poke through. Poke through the skin and meat, roll it, poke through and then poke through the skin and meat. And one thing that you may have noticed is I'm going at a 45 degree angle and that allows me to now push into the cutting board. It's still on the cutting board, it's not in the air, but by skewing it at an angle, it really allows me to push my arm into it and get that skewer poking right through. So right here, so we have chicken oysters, so very, very, very decadent piece right here, luxurious piece of one of the most tenderest part of the chicken, chicken oysters. Okay, so we have here the inner thigh, I call total, also known as the filet. So there's definitely sort of the top smoother part and the bottom rougher, just to make it pretty, I'm gonna make sure all the smooth part is on top and just laid out based on size sort of the smaller ones on the bottom. And these ones, just gonna roll it again. Now there's different methods or philosophies of skewering. Some shops, you know, they might go straight through. I like this rolled method. I just think it cooks much more plumpier, but it's up to you guys to experiment on different methods of skewering. So this is about the inner thigh. Okay, and then lastly, we want to work on these chicken drumsticks. So the chicken drumstick right here, this is all the tough kind of ankle area right here. So this, we can definitely make skewers out of it. It's got a nice chewy cartilagey skewer. But for now, we'll just remove it. I think in a future video, I will do one where we're gonna do more focus on cartilages. So we won't do that for this video. So we have here all the, the drumsticks. Now, one part of yaktori philosophy would be to remove all these tendons because it's really hard, really tough to chew. But if you purposely make it or your, your, your intent is to have people eat this harder part, then I say it's okay. So, but then the idea is how do you creatively make sure that the crunchiness of the Achilles tendons matches when one is eating it. So for me, I like to make this negima using the drumsticks, but instead of these green onions, I'm gonna be using whole onions. In this case, I'll be using red onions, definitely sweeter. And the reasons why I'm using the whole onions is it just has that nice sort of crunch characteristic that pairs well with the drumsticks crunchiness. So it's gonna already slice these up. I'm gonna cut these a little bit further. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut this actually just right in the middle is gonna be perfect. 
Actually, these are pretty big, so I might be able to use one of these ones. So just maybe two slivers in between. And we can always trim this too. But right here I have, so green, or not green onion, red onion, skewer it through. This is the drumstick. Now the Achilles tendons, so we're gonna be going uh, perpendicular to the Achilles tendons. So once again, poke through the skin and meat, roll it, poke through the meat and through the skin, getting the onions, poke through the skin and the meat, roll it, and then meet the skin right here. So it's nice and really fat, but it's a little too fat, a little too fat for people to bite into. So this is where we can trim. And trimming is nice because that way the meat will be the same size, but even if the onions are as different width, it's gonna get nice and becomes that nice width, about an inch wide for both the onions and the drumstick. So this is similar to what we made here, except this is thigh meat and this is leg meat. And they just both, while both dark meat just have different textures. So serving these within the same chorus, it allows one to experience juicy and tender thigh, as well as sort of the crunchy drumsticks right here. So these trimmings we'll put away. Let's continue that with these drumsticks. So I just cut it right in the middle. Cut this right in the middle. This right in the middle. Okay, so we have more onions. So this dish, I've been naming it the Hokkaido Negima. So Negima means in between onions. And standard, usually you'll find standard in most uh, yakitori shops is going to be the green onion. However, in Hokkaido, a lot of the Negima happens to have the whole onions. And it's usually not the red onions, but it is the the white onions or the brown onions. And the reason why I call it Hokkaido Negima, it's the history behind it is at a shop in um, Muruan, which was a port city uh, in Sapporo. So it was a very blue color, I guess a poor man's city in Hokkaido. All the workers that worked at this, like the steel mills or the, the port, they wanted yakitori. However, this went, this was an era like after the war, people didn't have much money, the shops didn't have much money, and people wanted yakitori, except it was hard to get chicken or grilled chicken. It was just pricey to get chicken in Hokkaido. So they were using pork and they're making yakitori using pork, still calling it yakitori, even though technically that'll be yakitong. And instead of, Green onions, they were using whole onions, and that's because in the colder climate of Hokkaido, it was just much easier to grow the whole onions. And since then, the yakitori shops now serve chicken, but the use of the whole onions, it's kind of, I've seen it, sort of the, the traditions of the whole onions being passed down, even in modern izakayas in around Hokkaido, like Sapporo. So since then, I've kind of dubbed it the Hokkaido Negima, but it just shows you that you can do Negima in either the green onions or the whole onion. So right here, this is the Hokkaido Negima, but once again, I'm gonna trim it. Now, another technique or tip that I want to share when making yakitori is you can trim that off. You can pack these really, really, really tight or you can loosen it up a bit. And so I'm taking this and I'm gonna loosen it up a bit. Same thing with this one. Once I trim it, let me loosen it up. And the reasoning behind that is when the yakitori is really packed tight, as you cook the chicken, it's gonna expand. It's all the waters and everything, it kind of expands. And as it expands, if it's too tight, 
you're not giving it enough room to let it breathe and expand and it's actually going to squeeze out all the good juices out of the chicken so by giving it a little bit of space you don't want it too much gap it, it looks ugly when there's too much gap but if you give it enough space just to let the chicken expand a bit it's going to help keep the chicken much more juicier so these are all these small sort of tips um, you know that i've learned over time that i definitely want to continue to teach you guys because these are the small things that let's say have been passed down from shop from shop that makes a difference between a very delicious juicy yakitori versus one that is you know dry and not as tasty so it's all the small things that you know people may not notice that goes into yakitori making okay so all these are here just gonna move them to the side so and if it's if it's something like this and it's looking a little ugly you can always sort of remove it and then re-skewer it so that it's nice and tight because if it's all floppy before you put on the grill even when it comes off the grill it's going to be pretty floppy too so okay all right so lastly we have one more skewer that i wanted to show you guys we're going to be taking all these trimmed thigh parts here I'm going to try to remove the skin but a little bit of skin is okay now the idea behind this this is very similar to when a yakitori shop makes tsukune tsukune meaning basically the meatballs and with tsukune you take all the trimmings from the chicken including it could be the thigh it could be the breast it could be skin it could be cartilage all those sort of excess parts from yakitori you'll put that normally through a, a meat grinder and grind it down and make ground chicken and you can make meatballs out of it and skewers called skunet however uh, for you guys if you're only breaking down one or two whole chickens just like how i did putting it through a meat grinder may not make the most sense uh, considering you're only going to get maybe four skewers out of it i don't know if it's worth most people's time to have to wash through uh, a food processor or meat grinder therefore basically my hack my original way of how do i use these trimming was essentially to just start i'll cut them up a little bit in case they're a little bit longer you can trim it but i just start skewering these pieces and then if you just start kind of tucking them in and then you can also start squeezing it with your hand all the the fats and the skin is going to bind it together if you basically just poke it through even with all these excess trimmings it becomes becomes a log it becomes a yakturi log that definitely is going to still taste good it's all that good dark thigh meat so I'm just going to be poking through poking through now if you poke through and you have these excess side pieces you can definitely trim them but besides that just keep on poking it through you can always squeeze it knead it when you make tsukune too there's a lot of kneading and that gets all that binds all the fats together so right here let's put this one log right here second log you can see that we have a lot of from all these skewers we have all these trimmings so it's possible to make a lot of tsukune from this but i'm showing you something that you guys can make at home that's not tsukune And there's some parts of green onions mixed in there from what I trimmed earlier on the negima. That's totally okay. It's just more flavor that will go into the log. So I'll just make one more of these logs. I have four shiso leaves. I'm actually going to be using the shiso leaves to wrap these up. So I just have enough for four logs. Okay, so any of these extras, I'll put it away. Trim these a bit. 
even with these logs, it's very important that they're somewhat of the same length, same consistency. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Then we have these shisa leaves from earlier. So shisa leaves, uh, for those who don't know, these are leaves that you probably may have found, seen them on sushi garnish, sashimi garnish. It is similar to basil, mint, anywhere where you use basil or mint, I think you can pretty much use shiso. So in cocktails and desserts, shiso works very well. In Japanese cuisines, it's not just in sushi, it can be used in yakitori. So in this case, I wet my hands just a little bit just to add some moisture to these shiso leaves so I can wrap it up. And this way, even if these are you know chunks of, of chicken trimmings, the shiso leaf essentially holds it in place. So now we have these logs. All right, so now I'm pretty much done with all these parts. All right guys, so we're just done skewering from four chicken legs. So that's basically four chicken thighs and four chicken drumsticks. We're able to make 18 skewers. So right here we have the classic negima, negima with skin, and then a thigh with skin. So these are all thigh meat right here. From the drumsticks, we're able to make four of these Hokkaido negima. Special parts within the thigh, we have here the oysters and in the inner thigh. And also from the thigh and the knee cartilage combined together with some onions, we have the knee cartilage lollipops. And all the trimmings, because in yakitori, every part does not go to waste, all the trimmings we're able to skewer to make the shiso maki, so shiso wrap trimmings are here. And any of the bones or cartilage that we're not using goes into the soup stock. Basically, we're gonna make some good chicken soup out of this. But just wanted to show you guys from even the same chicken thigh, same drumsticks, you can make all sorts of different yakitori. And all of this, this is sort of the yakitori that I make, but this is not necessarily a standard, as in every shop, they have their own methods of using chicken thighs or making even negima. Some shops are gonna use chicken thigh for the negima. Some shops are gonna be using chicken legs. They might combine the thigh and legs. Some places might have thigh and breast. So I really wanted to encourage you guys to take chicken, whether it's a thigh, drumstick, or even other parts, and use maybe this as sort of a starting point, but be inspired to make your own skewers. And that's one of the, my favorite things about yakitori is you can make things up based on, there's definitely traditions and sort of guidelines that have been passed down from master to master, shop to shop, and shared among the community. But what's really awesome, for me, what I think is cool about yakitori is you can take those same rules and make it your own. As long as it tastes good and you have fun doing it, I think that's all that matters for yakitori. So right here, these are the skewers that I've made tonight for you guys, but take it and basically have it your way and enjoy. That's what's fun about yakitori. So this week, the focus is on thigh and legs. Next week, we'll be focusing on other parts. There's still many more to go. We got breasts. We got wings, we got skin, we have inner. So, so many more lessons to come, but hopefully you guys can take your thighs and legs that you broke down from a whole chicken and start making your own skewers. All right, so I'm hungry. I'm about to grill this up. If you guys have not yet, make sure to follow Yakitori Guy on Instagram. Ask me any questions through there. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel, Yakitori Guy. Ask me questions here. Happy to help you guys out, but I'm ready to start grilling these. All right, see you next week.